Most compressible flows are high speed and therefore the associated kinetic energy is large and is comparable to the heat content of the flow. The variations in kinetic energy can be significant enough to affect the heat and other fluid properties. To properly describe the energy work relationships, we need an additional tool which is thermodynamics. Thermodynamics is the branch of science dealing with energy and work of a system. In the 19th century, the need to develop methods for describing the principles and improving the efficiency of steam engines gave birth to this branch of science. A thermodynamic system is an amount of matter separated from its surroundings by a closed boundary. This boundary does not need to be a wall. It can be any enclosed surface with properties defined everywhere. This boundary can transmit or insulate heat. It can deform and transfer work to surroundings or other systems. It can also allow mass transfer across itself. Thermodynamics is a vast area. So, we will limit our discussion to the elements required for our analysis of compressible flows. The study of thermodynamics is primarily based on a few fundamental laws. The zeroth law of thermodynamics states that there exists a variable of state, the temperature. Two systems that are in thermal contact, that is, separated by an enclosure that transmits heat are in equilibrium only if temperature is constant. Take a glass of cold water and a glass of hot water and place them next to each other on a table. After some time, if you measure the temperature of the water in the two glasses and that of the room, you will notice that it is the same, that is, they are in thermal equilibrium. This is the basic essence of the zeroth law of thermodynamics. The first law of thermodynamics states that there exists a variable of state, the internal energy. If a system is transformed from a state of equilibrium A to another state B by a process in which certain amount of work is done by the surroundings and a certain amount of heat being transferred from the surroundings, the difference in the internal energy of the system is equal to the sum of energy and work. Mathematically, for a small change of state, this can be written as shown here. Unlike the internal energy, heat and work are not variables of state. They depend on the process used for changing the thermodynamic state. A process can be of different types. For example, a reversible process is one where the system can be returned to its original state by backtracking a process that led to the change of state. An adiabatic process is where no heat and mass transfer are allowed to and from the system. A process that is both reversible and adiabatic can be called an isentropic process. The limitation of the first law is that it simply demands that the energy must always be conserved and it doesn't care about the process or direction of change. This condition of direction is imposed by the second law of thermodynamics using a state variable called the entropy. It states that for a closed system without exchanging any heat and work with the surroundings, the entropy increases in any spontaneous process and is maximum once the system reaches equilibrium. The entropy between two states A and B in a reversible process 
is given by the following equation. Have you ever wondered why a hot cup of coffee placed in a room at standard temperature always cools down but does not get hotter? It can be shown mathematically that in a hypothetical case where a coffee is assumed to heat up, the change in entropy of the system is negative. This violates the second law of thermodynamics. In the case of an irreversible process, the change in entropy is always greater than zero. And therefore, according to the second law, the process will only proceed in a direction in which the entropy of the system and its surroundings increases or remains unchanged. Before we move on and understand how to quantify the different energies of a system, we need to talk about the ideal gas. An ideal gas is a theoretical gas where intermolecular forces are neglected. This assumption leads to a simple equation of state for an ideal gas as shown here. The ideal gas law applies to most gases at low densities. For example, gases at standard atmospheric pressure and temperature such as air. To quantify the amount of heat and work added to the system, we need to define a variable called the enthalpy. The general form of enthalpy valid for any gas is shown here. For ideal non-reacting gases, since the internal energy is a function of temperature only, this equation reduces to the following form. An ideal gas for which enthalpy and the internal energy are only functions of temperature is called a thermally perfect gas. In this course, any reference to an ideal gas indicates the assumption of thermally perfect gas. The amount of heat needed to increase the system's temperature by 1 Kelvin is called its specific heat. If the system maintains a constant pressure during this heat addition process, then the specific heat is denoted by Cp and is called specific heat at constant pressure. On the other hand, if the heat addition is a constant volume process, then we refer to the specific heat as Cv or specific heat at constant volume. For an ideal gas, these can be defined using the internal energy and the enthalpy of the system as shown here. A gas in which both Cp and Cv can be assumed to be constant is a calorically perfect gas. For a given gas, Cp and Cv are related to the gas constant R using this relation. Moreover, we can also define an additional variable called the heat capacity ratio or the ratio of specific heats by taking the ratio of Cp and Cv as shown here. This variable is commonly denoted by the Greek letter gamma. We can now express Cp and Cv using gamma and R using the following relations. Now, let us combine the first and the second laws. The resulting equation is a very useful relation between entropy and other thermodynamic properties. This equation is known as the TDS equation. For a calorically perfect gas, this can be rewritten as shown here. This equation can be integrated to obtain the change in entropy as the thermodynamic state of the system changes from state 1 to state 2. We can say that entropy is a function of two thermodynamic variables, temperature and specific volume or temperature and pressure. For an isentropic process, change in entropy is equal to zero. Substituting this result in the entropy equation, we can obtain very useful relations that help us compute pressure ratios, 
density ratios and temperature ratios between two thermodynamically different states. Using these equations, we can compute the state variables of a system undergoing an isentropic process. For example, in real world, the compression and expansion processes of an internal combustion engine can be assumed to be isentropic. Based on the compression ratio that is enforced by the design of the piston cylinder assembly and on the initial temperature of the gas mixture, the final temperature of the gas can be calculated using these isentropic relations. With that, let's wrap up this lesson.